Welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Unit 1, Paper 2, Question 3 for the 2018 Cape Economics Paper. We would have looked at Question 1 and Question 2 in previous videos. So Question 3 deals with Module 3 of the syllabus. So let's see what we're being asked here. So for three, part A, we have to distinguish between each of the following pairs of concepts. And these concepts are transfer earnings and economic rent for four marks. And then we have to look at absolute poverty and relative poverty for four marks. So the transfer earnings is the amount that a factor must earn in its present usage in the long run. Economic rent is the payment to a factor over and above the minimum wage. Economic rent is the payment to a factor over and above the minimum it would take to keep it in its present usage. And it's actually over and above transfer earnings. So once you would have had two points each for transfer earnings and economic rent, you would get your four marks. Then we have to look at absolute poverty and relative poverty. So absolute poverty occurs when persons' income levels are below the poverty line so that they cannot consume sufficient necessities to meet their basic needs to maintain life and uh, the key point there would be being below the poverty line relative poverty examines poverty in relation to the economic status of other members of society so in this case you are not looking at it in absolute terms and that you're not comparing your income to the poverty line but you are actually comparing it to other persons in society so it's actually the extent to which a person's income falls below the average income level of the economy so it's not how much it falls below the poverty line but the average income earned in the economy now we move to part b where we have to identify two categories of persons who are more susceptible to poverty and explain why they are more susceptible that would be for eight marks so they're only asking for two but i would have given a list um with a little explanation so you could choose which two you prefer and you are going to expand upon it if you only list them you are going to get one mark for each item you put there but you asked uh, and this is where you have to pay attention to the question you have to identify yes um, which means pretty much you're listing them but after listing them or identifying them you now have to explain why they are more susceptible so it's more than just writing a list you listen them out yes but you're going to have to explain a little bit and because it's eight marks it means it's four marks for each one so you're going to get one mark for identifying and then the three marks would be for explaining the point that you would have identified so you should be looking for about three points in each of your explanations now i did not go um fully in detail in terms of the explanation here because i wanted to just give you uh, as many options as possible for you to choose from so you might want to give a little more explanation right expand a little more to give you a full but this will give you a little idea in terms of what you're required to have so the first one we could look at would be physically challenged. So these persons often find it difficult to gain employment, which would be accommodative to their special needs. So because 
they may not have let's say wheelchair ramps or whatever discrimination they may face in terms of persons that want, wanting to hire them it may mean that they are a little more vulnerable right a little more susceptible in terms of uh, a little more susceptible to poverty the second item would be older persons so the elderly are not part of the labor force right so if you're over 60 some cases over 65 you would be counted as being in the labor force depending on the retirement age in your country so unless they have an adequate pension or investments or family support they may have difficulty maintaining a decent standard of living our third item would be single parent families so the average income in a single parent home is less than the average family with both parents next we have illegal immigrants and this is very relevant now in the case of Trinidad and Tobago where we are facing um, illegal immigrants from Venezuela you know this question relates to this so illegal immigrants they accept low paying jobs in fear of being deported some of them also do not have access to education and basic health care so you can see how this can become a problem then we have young persons so they may not possess the necessary skills training or experience required by firms which would make it difficult for them to acquire a job in the first place. And the last one I made mention of here would be indigenous peoples. And they are sometimes discriminated against in the workplace, unfortunately. And so they may not have access to employment opportunities that offer higher wages. So you don't have to write... Um, all these points as a matter of fact you're not required to but i just wanted to give you some options what you're required to do is to choose two but you are to identify the two and explain it thoroughly for four marks each um, i just want to show you how much you are required to write in terms of the lines so you have pretty much this entire page and then some right you have about a page and a half or so so it's a lot that you're required to write so you really need to take two of the points that i have there and really um expand upon it okay and part c is asking us to analyze the effects of geographical mobility and occupational mobility on wages now luckily we don't have to draw any graphs to this question you know usually with econ we have a lot of graphs to draw but for question three we didn't have any graphs to draw which could be fortunate or unfortunate for you depending on whether you like to draw the graphs or not but as a young economist um you're gonna have to get used to drawing the graphs but i mean we're grateful that we don't have to draw any for this one so they're asking us to analyze the effects of the geographical mobility and occupational mobility on wages. And like I said, no graphs to draw. So let's get into the question. So we would have defined geographical mobility and occupational mobility firstly and then we would speak to how it affects wages so geographical mobility relates to workers moving between similar jobs that are located in two different geographical areas so the key thing here is that it's it's similar jobs and in two different locations Occupational mobility is concerned 
with workers switching jobs in different sectors or professions so with occupational mobility you can be in the same location but this would be a person switching profession so let's say a teacher switching to becoming an engineer or a police to let's say an attorney right you're switching professions when there is labor mobility labor would tend to move out of areas with lower wages and move into markets where wages are higher this results in the supply of labor in the low wage market falling over time and wages would rise In the high wage market, the supply of labor increases over time and the wage rate will eventually fall. This mobility of labor results in a convergence of wages. And when I say convergence, um, what I mean is that they will equalize. Right? So labor results. The mobility of labor results in a convergence of wages in the different labor markets and this eliminates any wage differentials. If labor is immobile in the long run, however, then adjustments of wages would not be possible and the automatic equalization process would not occur. So this is the end of question three the last question in your 2018 paper so i hope that you found it uh, helpful if you need me to go through any of the subtopics within the questions pertaining to module three you can put it down there in the chat um, I will read it and I will try my best to make a video or make videos based on it. I know exam time is coming up pretty soon and you'll want to get your past papers in and make sure you understand your theory. So you let me know what it is you want covered and I'll try my best uh, to make videos to suit your needs. I am Ms. Lushu. I make economics videos. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And remember to hit the notification bell to get updates as to when next I'm dropping a video.